our natural allies in the struggle to restructure our economy are the vast majority of citizens. The central uh, message of our book is that uh, this is not inevitable. It's not. Uh, it's, it's a result of, of, the, of the rules of the game uh, that uh, we've uh, rewritten the rules of the game over the last uh, 40 years in ways that have disadvantaged uh, workers and uh, have led to uh, more corporate power. I think it's mostly self-interest. Uh, the, the, uh, the people who, who benefit from those policies obviously think uh, those policies work well because they work well for them. Um, there's been an element of ideology, uh, an element of uh, belief that, uh, a genuine belief in the part of some people that uh, these policies will lead to the well-being of everybody in society. But I think the striking thing is that uh, we've uh, had uh, a, an experiment, you might say now, for a third of a century or more on these ideas of neoliberalism and austerity and they just haven't worked. And um, uh, the failures uh, have occurred not just in one country, but country after country. And uh, that means that we ought to admit uh, that those ideas uh, are flawed ideas. And that is what motivates a search for alternative ideas and alternative policy frameworks based on those ideas. Obviously necessary to make that shift is it's a political shift. And so the politics have to work. Now, in the United States, uh, a major impediment to uh, having our politics work in the right way is the influence of money in politics. Um, not only the direct influence through lobbying, revolving door, campaign contributions, but also the indirect influence through the media, where uh, large fractions of the media are controlled by very wealthy people who use the media to, uh, uh, you might say, uh, extend, propagate their perspectives. Yeah, I do think the what is needed now is a global Green New Deal. Um, uh, the word Green New Deal just emphasizes uh, uh, two things. One, uh, that we need to transition to a green economy. Uh, we have to live within our planetary boundaries. Or, uh, we have no alternative. But the term New Deal is evocative of uh, what happened as we fought the Great Depression uh, in 1932, uh, that uh, we needed massive mobilization of resources. And uh, that's what it's saying. We're not going to be able to win this war to save the planet just on a little tweaks in our policy framework. We need a new deal. Uh, and it need, will need to be a comprehensive set of policies that enable us to, to uh, address something that has uh, the urgency and the scale of dealing with the uh, problem of climate change.
I think uh, our natural allies in the struggle to restructure our economy are the vast majority of citizens. Um, uh, workers uh, who've uh, not shared in the prosperity would obviously be an important constituent. Uh, those who care about the future, about the future of their children, the future of our planet, uh, know that we have to change our economic model and they are another important uh, constituent. Uh, people who believe, whether they're rich or poor, who believe in social justice, uh, um, uh, fairness uh, uh, within a generation and across generations will support uh, this kind of agenda. So I think actually that most citizens, including many of those at the very top of the income distribution, uh, will agree that uh, these are necessary changes uh, for our society, for our economy. My two books, uh, People, Power, and Politics, uh, and Profits, and uh, Rewriting the Rules of the European Economy, uh, I try to lay out uh, a fairly comprehensive uh, agenda. Um, there's no magic bullet. Uh, something of this enormity uh, is going to require a multiplicity of policies. Um, policies that necess necessitate a rethinking both of our uh, macroeconomics and our microeconomics and our globalization and our welfare policies. Um, given where we are right now, uh, I think a, a rebalancing of power is certainly among the key issues. Uh, there's too much corporate power, too little power to workers, uh, too little concern about uh, protecting the environment. Uh, uh, so part of the, at the core of any agenda is uh, a rebalancing of power and uh, that includes rethinking the relationship between the private sector, the government, and civil society. There are many things that uh, one can do, both at the individual uh, level uh, uh, and uh, as a citizen in the political sphere, uh, the obvious answer uh, is that uh, may, the rewriting of the rules, these uh, changes, uh, are going to necessitate political action. And that means political engagement. Uh, uh, in most of our countries, uh, turnout, voter turnout is very low. And uh, uh, that has uh, meant that uh, those with financial resources use them to get a turnout of those who support their their perspective. So, turnout is voting uh, is is critical, um, but. In many ways, as consumers, as employers, as workers, uh, these are things that we can do in our everyday life. So, for instance, uh, as consumers, we can uh, boycott companies that have bad environmental policies, and, uh, bad uh, policies towards their workers. Um, and those who are in managerial positions can make sure that their companies treat their workers well uh, and pay them decent wages. Um, uh, workers uh, can join with other workers in collective action, uh, join unions that, that have uh, uh, the ability to make their voices collectively 
uh, heard better than they would be individually. I think the uh, most important uh, thing is to remember the economy a means to an end, not an end in itself, and that one should always keep in mind the ends of making uh, society people better off and assess the performance of e the economy within that lens so that uh, one doesn't say, oh, the economy is doing well because GDP is going up. If GDP is going up, but in an unsustainable way, with the benefits going to just a few people, that's not a successful economy. So it seems to me that one of the most important uh, things that young economists can do is to try to uh, make sure 